coming up on the next Mystic Fix. What do you think about these religions that are a little outside your comfort zone? Today, we're going to meet one of the Sikhs of St. Louis, Deb Bhatti, and we're also going to talk with the witch, Gwion Raven, plus, of course, tarot readings by yours truly. Hope to see you. Hey, 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 it's Julia Gordon Bramer, back with Mystic Fix. How do you feel about religion, ceremony, rituals, and initiations? That's what this episode of Mystic Fix is all about, in line with the Hierophant Tarot card. First, Deb Bhatia is in the studio with me. He's the founder of the Sikhs of St. Louis, and he's going to give us some idea of what that's all about, as well as some understanding of the Sikh religion. A little later in the program, we'll meet the author and mystic Guyan Raven, who's completed three different schools of mystic initiation. And of course, we'll close out with tarot card readings for our callers. But first, Deb, you were born in Punjab, Northern India. Yes. And you came to the USA in 2011, living first in New York City and then coming to St. Louis in 2018, right? Yes, that's true. Yeah, what, what brought you to St. Louis? Work. Work, okay, yeah. and which you're in IT, right? I am in IT, yes. Okay, yeah. so I know very little about the Sikh religion, but I, I've been reading it a little bit. Um, one thing, uh, first of all, I think many of us uh, could could relate in a way um, with the idea of one God, right? Absolutely. Um, and uh, and I was very impressed with uh, both your uh, personal and the religious devotion to community service. So uh, yeah, uh, so um, uh, I learned Sikh means disciple or seeker or learner. That is true. <laughs> um, yes. can, can you give yes. us an overview uh, of of what your faith is? Yeah. So the basic principle with a Sikh religion is, as you said, God is one, mm -hmm. serving the humanity and selfless service. Simple and easy. No judgment. Everyone is equal. Treat everyone equally. And whosoever is practicing their right, let them practice their rights in case of religion, in case of personal life. So open Beautiful. to all, no judgment. Yeah, yeah. And um, I, and I, I also read uh, you don't put one religion over another either, right? You give people space there. That is that is true. That's in fact uh, the religion was formed. Uh, if I go back into the history in like uh -huh. about 1300s, 1400s, that time uh, in the part of the Asia, there was a lot of convertism was happening, forceful convertism. That's when the Sikh warriors were coming into the picture. There's no law enforcement. There's no army at that time. So the only who was able to help was the warriors at that time. Sikh warriors would go help them, save the women from that, and then bring them back to their home. Mm -hmm. So the reason of the turban, whenever you see a Sikh wearing a turban, is one is to always keep their hair as it is, was given by the god. Mm -hmm. So that's basically one identity a Sikh has been given. Right, there's no hair cutting, correct? There's no hair okay. cutting at all. And the second, Back at that time, and still today, when thousands of people are standing there, you see one six standing in the middle with a turban, you need a help. You go ask him, he will never say no. Uh -huh. And that's how it started back at that time. It was more like an identification that when you see a Sikh, he's a warrior, he's going to uh -huh. go protect you, protect your family, he's going to serve you and help you whatever you need. Uh, I'll tell you, um, before meeting you today, my only experience with a Sikh goes back to elementary school. Mm, and okay. I grew up in Rockville, Maryland. Okay. And there was a little boy who came into my grade. It was probably fourth or fifth grade. And he had a turban on. Okay. And, you know, it was the 1970s. And kids can be kids. <laughs> yeah. And so it became a game that the boys would tear his turban off. Oh, my God. And I felt so bad for him, but uh, the story has a silver lining because so it was revealed that he had waist long, beautiful black hair. Now, remember, this is the hippie generation of the 70s, so he instantly became the coolest kid in school. <laughs> um, but he did stop wearing his turban, and, and I always felt bad about that. It, it wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't a safe place, you know. It, today they would probably be more respectful. I would hope. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, but yeah. That so that was the only thing I knew about Sikhs were the turbans. So that of course is only the Sikh men. Right. Um, do the women have any kind of 
identifying? The, yes, uh, women, they are not. So everyone in the religion who practice religion, you're not supposed to cut your hair. And then, <clears throat> then comes into the Sikh baptism. Using the word baptism, there is a word in uh, Sikh uh, religion, it's called Amrit Chakna. So when you get baptized, you have to, the women are also supposed to wear a turban. So there is a round turban, it's called Dharmala. And um, the women also wear that, and you wear you put on a sword. It's a very small, tiny sword, mm -hmm. and you keep that with you, which basically um, symbolizes the protection of the community. So, mm -hmm. and there are more the kata, which is I'm waiting right now. That okay. that symbolizes God is one. Oh, so if sure. you ever see someone wearing that, uh, that's definitely Beautiful. yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, so um, swords probably don't work out too well in uh, metal detectors, huh? <laughs> yes, they don't. Um, probably leave them home when you're on a plane. <laughs> yes, my father travels every year from India, so what you have to do is you have to check it into your bag. Um, so, it was basically, it took a long time to bring this into the law, to make everyone understand. Eventually, when it was everyone was aware about the boundaries of the religion, so they were allowed afterwards that you can go ahead and start keeping it into your check-in bag. So he's allowed. He keeps it in his check-in bag. When he arrives here, when he brings his bags out, he just put it, put it back on. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so what else did I read about you? I I know um, you're probably vegetarian, correct? I'm not. You're not. <laughs> I'm not. Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> so there's eating. there's a little bit of freedom yes. in, in the religion. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. The vegetarian comes into the uh, temple is because we want to honor everyone. We want to respect everyone's. Uh, uh, the meal boundaries. Uh -huh. So that's why the, every time you go to the Sikh temple, that's another thing, 24-7 Sikh temples are serving food. Uh, in Midwest it's a little different because there's not many population, but if you go to the East Coast and West Coast and New York City, food was there every time, 24-7 you go there, Sikh temple will be serving you food. And wow. uh, that's why to respect everyone's boundaries, vegetarian meal it is. Wow, okay. And um, so you've had a little bit of press about feeding the community, especially during COVID. Yes, yes. Um, that was a great enlightening time for myself as well. Selfless service is a big part of the family. We have been serving that when we were a kid. My parents, my grandparents always used to tell us how serving the humanity is more important than anything else. I never realized that what's in it for me until when I started. I've been always talking about me, myself, my work routine, keeping myself right at the priority. But then it was a matter of the first time when I served a person on the street who was hungry for the last four days. During the COVID time, there was no help out there on the street. That's when I realized that how happy I was. Wow. How so achieving this. You're not just serving the Indian community then. No, it's open to all. So when we started, in fact, there was uh, one shelter uh, for 150 people. And when we started cooking meals, uh, we started helping them out. It was a matter of time when other shelters started calling us. There were like 12 shelters on the line again after that. And then it was we were serving like 1,000 meals a day. And then it <coughs> eventually further went down to 1,500 families in a day in a food drive. Wow. People would drive by and take the stuff. So 4,500 really meals a day. So, so your organization, Sikhs of St. Louis, right. is a disaster relief and emergency response group. That is true. Um, serving, uh, it says currently serving in Missouri. So you go beyond St. Louis. We then. do. We were, in fact, nationwide. When we started, we were uh, sending supplies to New York City, we did send it to Detroit, Michigan, wherever we would see there is a help, and if we have supplies and resources, let's go ahead and distribute them. Wow, yeah. well, that's terrific. And uh, you're, you're also in the Civil Air Patrol. Yes, that is true. <laughs> that's a, that's a, what a well-rounded guy, I swear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's one of my passions. We do um, emergency response, so we fly, we go ahead, um, yeah, do lots of emergency response missions. Yeah. So. So getting back to Sikhism, um, it kind of grew out of Hinduism and Islamism, is that true? Or, or is Buddhism a part of that? No, uh, we basically respect all the religions. Mm -hmm. Hinduism is more closer to us because in Punjab, Hindu, is, Hindu and Sikhs are the majority of the population. Mm -hmm. So Hindu religion is very close to Sikh religion, but Sikh religion just formed on its own. Okay. It's a total, okay. yeah, it's a fifth largest. And of course, the Hindu has the n numerous gods. I, I suppose yes. they're they're all part of Krishna, though, right? In yes. My understanding. Yeah. Um, 
And so, uh, okay, uh, it seems to me that the, the Sikh religion is very, you know, I have a Christian background, and, mm -hmm. and it seems to be traditionally Christian, and a lot of love your neighbor, and right. and one God, and, yep. and you know, our Ten Commandments, and this sort of uh, mm -hmm. uh, being a, a decent person. I mean, it kind of comes down to that, right? That is true. At the, at the end, every religion says just serve the humanity, go good, good to your neighbors, you know, help mm -hmm. each other. And that's what everyone is trying to do. Yeah. yeah. So um, meditation is also a part of your Meditation faith? is also a big part of the religion, yes. Uh -huh. in, the, in the previous times also, it was a big part. Meditation just helps you to uh, calm your senses and just with the daily uh, work. What I used to do whenever I would go for the food drives or go out on any big projects, still today we, would, we are doing those. I would always, before uh, going out of my house, I will sit down like for five minutes close my eyes and just think about all the time and all the people we're going to serve and then thank, and thank to God for helping us and giving us the opportunity to serve. It's really, truly about oneness. And that is true. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I read that, uh, and, and something that also really appealed to me about your faith is um, God is genderless, mm -hmm. and at the same time there's sort of a masculine representation, but his power, or its power, considered feminine. Yes. So, um, so yeah, I um, I just think there's a, a lot of interesting uh, perspectives. Yes, there's a, a very famous saying by the our Guru Guru Nanak Dev Ji that from her millions are born. Oh. Yeah. So, uh -huh. yeah, the respecting and because yes, uh, yeah. it goes all the way. If you know what I learned today, what I'm doing today, it all goes. The credit goes to my mother. You know, she always took us for every holiday. It's not that you have to be participating in a sick holiday. We were actively participating on uh, Christmas, Christmas month, the evening mass. Uh, she will take us to the church. We would go to the mosque. We would go to the Hindu temples. Wow. So it was like we were born with those qualities and the discipline from the <coughs> family and from the mother. The, the multiple aspects of humanity and, and yeah. perspectives, yeah. Wow, that that is that is lovely. Um, is there? Uh, you, I I think people, people, you know, I say uh, Americans mm -hmm. um, were not familiar with it, mm -hmm. and um, uh, oftentimes people will see a man in a turban and they'll think Muslim, yes. and in this day and age, even terrorist. Yes. You know, yes. um, do do you get a lot of flack that way? I mean. Gosh, you know, I'm just talking to you, and you're such a good-hearted person about helping the homeless and the hungry. And no, that is, no, that's totally fine. Um, that's uh, our another project. Uh, it's nationwide recognized. It's called Turban Day. We were in the Guinness World Record, though. Uh, I was part of the Six of New York, and then uh -huh. we opened up a chapter, chapter Six of STL. Then we have Indy. Then we have Pennsylvania. When we started the chapter, the biggest reason was after 9-11, there were so many incidents, especially the Wisconsin Temple shooting, the, just because people thought they're just Muslims. Oh. And it was difficult for us to explain everyone that who we are. But it's not good to say that you are a Muslim. It's not good to tag a Muslim into that category, too. It's a, yeah. just a one category of the group who is doing the damage right, to the course. whole... The extremists. There yeah, you go. They're the problem yes. in every religion. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So we took a route towards the, the turban day. I personally, when I was in the class, I have faced these issues. One incident when I just was studying in my class in New York City, I just uh, stepped out when I was about to go home, and then I suddenly heard the friends who used to study with me who were sitting right next to me, four of them, and they were like, did you saw that Osama bin Laden going home? And it felt so bad. I was like, oh. I'm your friend. I oh. I study with you. You know about me. Yeah. But, but at the end, is it like, should I be getting angry about it? Why are you saying that to me? It's a lack of education. It's ignorance. It's truly. ignorance. My job should be bringing that education with the entertainment so that people can learn. And that's when we came up with a concept called Turban Day. What we go and do is 
tie turbans. Simple and easy. Uh -huh. You want to know what's underneath my turban? It's like, here, I can tie it on you too. Uh -huh. We started doing that in New York. We're doing this in St. Louis. Um, we do with Susan G. Komen, St. Jude every year. Uh -huh. We basically go tie turbans to the cancer survivors to honor them. Oh, how wonderful. Because this is yeah. the most and expensive. you have gift a big of. event coming up in April, right? We have on April 15th. Okay. Yes, okay. that is the uh, Vesaki. We are uh, we requested the government to give us a Seek Awareness Month proclamation for the month of April. And we're going to celebrate. We're going on April 18 in the capital. First time in the Midwest, the uh, Visaki Festival is going to be celebrated. That's the birth of the Sikh religion. Okay. And, yeah. and, and uh, Deb, how can people reach you if, if they wanted to learn more? The best thing is uh, Facebook. We are very active on social media, Facebook and Instagram. I still, uh, we still give out the food every Sunday outside uh, our house. It's no questions asked. Anyone can come in and get it. It runs from 10 to 10.30. You take whatever you need. So Facebook, Instagram is the best okay. way to go. Just look up Seeks of STL. Seeks of STL. And that's S-I-K-H. H. Okay. S-I-K-H-S, yes. Yes. Okay, well, thank you so much for your time. It has really been a pleasure to meet you. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me. You bet. Still ahead, you may have heard the term in occult circles, in folklore and mythology, or the alchemical writings of Carl Jung. What is the process of initiation? You're about to find out. Next on News Talk STL 1019 and 941.